Cool. All right. Thank you. So Scott uh, said that we are all good. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome along. How is the weather where you are today? Because it's actually really nice here in London. So it's like 25 degrees. So the hottest we've had it so far this year, which is a nice change. So let me know where you're watching from today. We normally get quite a lot of people from all over the place, which is always interesting. Yeah, hot and humid to Cynthia. Martha's Vineyard in the US. Windy in the southwest. Steph's from Montreal. James also from Canada. Yeah, so like I thought, we get people from all over the globe, which is always really cool when you're doing these webinars. Excellent. OK, so we'll make a start then. As you can see, we've got the order of business here. Before we do that, just for anyone who doesn't know who I am, my name is Dan. I work here um, on the Convertory team. I've done so since 2020, so four and a bit years now, which is kind of crazy. Um, and I worked originally on the support desk when I was learning the product, so I'm well versed with it and also um, now moved into like product work, marketing, so I'm quite aware of the types of things people use Convertry for, the questions people have, and it's why I wanted to run this webinar today to get some more information on what people use Convertry for, what they like about it, and of course, also what we could do to improve it, because we are definitely not ones to shy away from um, negative feedback as well that will help us improve the app going forward. So as you can see here on the order of business, we've got um, a couple of things to show you first. So we're going to have a look at some new features that might be getting released over the next few months. We're going to have a first look at the new editor 2.0 that we've been working on in the background. And then we'll have an open feedback session. Again, this is your chance to ask for feature requests. Let us know what you love and more importantly, what you think we could do to improve about Convertry. And then we'll also have an open Q&A session at the end where you can ask any questions that you might have about the app if it's a feature that you're not sure how it works or just something you want me to show, then I'll be happy to do that at the end as well. So we won't wait any longer then, we'll jump into it and have a look at a couple of new features. So the first one we have is a new form widget skin. So for those of you who don't know the form widget, if I go into my Convertry editor here, um, form elements and form widget, this is essentially a pre-built form that you can use to collect leads on your pages. So you can see here, you can add different inputs. Um, you have options from the drop down here. So if you wanted to add a new text input, you can do that. And then you just select the field type. So if you wanted it to collect the last name and have that map to your autoresponder, you can do that. You can reorder um, the form inputs as well. And you can configure the button settings within the form widget. So we'll, we'd want it to sign up, for example, if we were doing it as an opt-in form. So I can save that now and it will show you the form widget. So this is how the form widget looks in the app. And obviously, as you just saw, this is all built for you. It's one of our elements, so you don't have to build it out yourself. Now we have a number of different skins for our form widget. So if we go to form settings and form appearance, you can see we've got this default skin here currently. If we click change, we actually have two new skins as well. So we've got the minimalist one, which we can set and you'll see it looks slightly different now. And we also have this lime set as well. So these are different skins for the form widget. And the first new feature that um, the devs are working on currently is a new skin for that. So you can see it here in our um, design um, portfolio board, I guess, like to call it. So Matteo, our designer, has been working on this. Um, and this is what it will look like. So you've got this dark mode kind of theme going on with the yellow ascent to go with it. And I think it looks really clean. Um, you can see as you move through to a two-step, we've got these um, yellow bars at the top here as well. And this is what it looks like in the different sizes, so for mobile, et cetera.
So the form widget skins, of course, are always editable. So if we go back to our editor, you can customize the colors on them. So if you go, for example, to button settings, you can color the button, whatever you like. If you wanted it to be like pink, for example, you could do that. So you still do have that flexibility with the form widget skins, but what it allows us to do is create new designs for you. So it means you have to do less work yourself. So for example, um, you don't have to think of a nice design and match up all the nice fonts and the color scheme yourself. We provide that for you out of the box. Um, and that is what this one is doing, giving you a dark mode for a form widget. So I think that will be a really good addition to the app and just gives you a few more options when you're creating forms in Convertry and using that form widget. So moving on to something else now is a smaller update to a number of elements. So we have different video elements in Convertry. For those of you who don't know this, if you come over to the elements tray on the left and select the media tab, you'll see we have video and background video, which use Convertry's um, video player. So that is for Convertry hosted videos. So when you've uploaded a video into Convertry, you can use one of these players to display it on your page. We also have Vimeo, Wistia and YouTube, which allow you to pull in videos from either of these third party services. Now, the main downside with using the third party video players is that you have less flexibility when it comes to customization, um, uh, appearance and different settings that you can have. So if we take video, a uh, YouTube video as an example, get rid of this for now and add a YouTube video element. You can see the settings that you have are very simple. You have the YouTube video URL, which basically pulls in the video you want to show. You have the autoplay option, which I think is actually still determined by the third party service as well. You have mute and show playback control. So all of these things um, are basic functionality, really. I um, mean, you don't have any options to do like cool things with the player. So what we've decided to do instead, if you see the um, Convertry video player for comparison, when you add this to your page, you can see we have some additional settings. So we have toggle sticky, and this is what we're going to be adding to the third party service video players. So toggle sticky essentially allows you to have a video that is stuck to the top of the page um, or any position really that you like. So you've got top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And what that means is when a user scrolls down your page, if you set the video to be sticky, it will stick to whatever part of the page you've set it to and it will continue playing when the user scrolls. So it's a great way to keep people's attention focused on sales videos or any marketing videos that you might have on your page, which you feel are really important and you really want your users um, or prospects to see. So we're adding this functionality for the third party services as well. As you can see here, we've got the options being added into the properties panel. And we also have an example of what that would look like. So I won't show you the designs for each one because it will literally be the same thing, but with the different player. But this is what it could look like on a live page when the user is scrolling down. So I'm sure many people are familiar with sticky videos. Um, so we're adding those to the three third party services as well. So there's a couple of features that the devs are working on at the moment um, that we'll hopefully have out in the next few months. As always with this, timelines are something that we can't really stick to when we're talking about feature releases. We never really like to give a strict deadline because we don't want to disappoint anyone. So if anyone holds me to anything in this webinar, then you will not be my friend because I am not saying any dates at all. These are things we are working on. Um, as you can see, we have designs for them and they're with the developers, which means progress is being made, but I'm not able to confirm release dates, unfortunately. Nevertheless, it's always exciting to look at new features and hopefully you guys appreciate the little behind the scenes tour with this stuff. So on to some more exciting feature stuff then. I'm gonna share with you a few early designs for something that we are working on um, as a long-term update to Convertry, and that is um, Editor 2.0. So 
Essentially, what we want to do is add a bit more responsiveness into the Convertry editor. Now, we're not by any means taking away the flexibility that it currently has. So one of the best things about Convertry's editor, in my opinion, is that it's completely freeform. So, you know, you can move anything around where you want. But we also appreciate that some people like to have that kind of more column and row layout system. So we want to be able to have an editor that allows you to do both and hopefully will allow for people to have some really cool hybrid sections on their pages where they have freeform stuff and some more um, typical column row layout. So we'll show you the designs that we have so far for this. And we're also giving the editor a bit of a reskin while we do this work. So you can see here, we've got, um, if I just use Figma zoom tool correctly, you can see slightly different um, skin for the editor. And you might notice we have this broken out um, column and row section on this page. So if we go down to these ones, you can see the kind of um, selected states that we have for this stuff. So Matteo has been working on this to make sure it's obviously very accessible for everyone and that it's easily um, legible when you're selecting elements. And you can see here on this design, we have a um, collection with rows. So you have these different rows here. And what we want to make sure we have is some responsiveness now with resizing this stuff. So as you can see down here, we have four rows. We've got some drag handles to resize, and that allows for things like this to be created. So some cool um, column layouts for your pages that are nice and neat, nice and easy to build. And you also can see from the right hand side, we have this properties section, which gives you the opportunity to set your percentages of the actual columns and rows. So that will allow you to do this um, without having to drag if you don't want to, if you want to just set it in the properties panel, that will be okay as well. And you may notice we've changed the um, properties panel from like a hovered, um, if I go to the editor currently, you can see this one kind of hovers, you can move it around. We've actually made it now dock to the side. I think that looks a lot cleaner, which is really nice. Um, and we've got as well on the left hand side, the elements um, are actually now docked to the left as well. And this really, I think, is a great new addition. So currently we have our elements tray, which again um, is kind of offset. Um, you can drag and drop from it. And if you want to look at the element tree for the page, you'll need to go into um, editor and show element tree. And we then have this floating tree, which is collapsible and if you have a long page, it's going to be like scrolling like this. It's a bit messy. So I think we can improve that. And that's why we're moving the element tree to the left and having it docked to the side. So you can always see the elements that you have on your pages, just making it a lot easier um, for your editing. It makes it a lot more. I feel like it's a lot more intuitive if you're trying to select something on the page and you have this section here to be able to just go and select it from there as well as from the page directly. So I think that's a really nice addition. And as I said, this isn't replacing Convertry's freeform editor in any way. Um, you know, don't want people to be worried that we're gonna take away what everyone loves about Convertry, but we want to ensure that people who want the freedom of the editor can use it like they do just now, um, but also have an additional um, option for people who prefer a column row style system which is responsive and allows you to create layouts a lot easier on the page so that's um, a first look at the editor 2.0 which we're calling it at the moment um, as you can see over here we've got loads of different components that have been worked on and if we look at the element tray as well you can see we've now docked this to the left hand side so you'll have elements down here on the left that you can select from you have the element tree option which you can um, toggle to and for example, if we take videos as, as an example, when you select videos, because it has more than one um, option nested within it, that will then open like a separate sub menu. We've got the back arrow to get back. So I think that is really clean. So Scott's asking, will there be an option to continue to use the legacy interface? So are you meaning the actual um, look of the editor? So for example, if we go back to the editor like this style look, or do you mean like how the, um, for example, the element tree is floating and how the properties float? Um, if you could let me know, Scott, that would be great. Then I will um, answer that for you. Current look and feel. So in terms of 
the current feel, um, that definitely won't be lost with the updates. It will still be the same editor in the sense that I can do this, like I can move things around still. I can drop pick things up and drop them where I like. You won't have to use the new um, like column and row features. So in that sense, yes, you, you, there will be like the legacy um, feel to it. The current look, um, as far as I understand it, that will be changing. Um, there won't be an option to revert back to this current um, design, if you will, of the editor. Um, but I think the new skin is a lot more up to date with just how things are now in the industry. I think it's really clean um, and a lot clearer as well with where the options are set out. If we go back um, to the canvas, I think this is a lot more um, clearer when it comes to actually designing pages. So uh, hopefully that will be another improvement to the editor that we're excited to work on. Yeah, I'm glad you like it, Ian. I think it's really smart as well and clean. And if anyone else has any thoughts on the Editor 2.0 stuff, um, please do drop a comment in the chat and I'll be happy to either address it or just make a note of it so I can pass it on to the team. As I said, with this webinar, we're definitely open to hearing all sorts of feedback. So, you know, um, please don't hesitate to leave any comments you have in the chat. So Steph's asking, is this integrating Figma with Convertry or is this just the demo? Yeah, so Figma is just the program that we use, um, our designer uses to do his designs essentially. So there's no like affiliation with Figma that we have or promotion or anything or integration in terms of our editor or um, that, you know, I'm promoting that either. It's just that this is where his work is. So these are where, um, as he's called it here, his lab. This is currently his lab for all of the new designs. So yeah, it won't be integrating Figma into Convertry at all. Um, we're just using, I'm just using it to show, show that off because that's where they're, um, they're housed at the moment. So yeah, this is how essentially things come to life around here. Um, we'll spec up things like um, product work that will go to our designer and then it will go to development teams who make it actually into a real life thing in the app. So yeah, a bit of behind the scenes um, stuff today, which I think is exciting. But I do wanna move on to the more open-ended section of the webinar now. So we've done a, a bit of, um, you know, teasing some new features. I wanted to do that at the start because I think it's a nice, um, a nice reward for those of you who have come along today. Um, but I really now wanna open the floor up to any feedback with, um, that you might have with Convertry. So, I'm sure there are many of you in here that have used Convertry for a while, but there might be some of you that haven't. So if you're new to Convertry, this is your chance now to tell us what you found difficult as you're starting out. And if you're not new to Convertry, this is also an opportunity to tell us what you think we can improve. So what have you found difficult? What do you think is missing from the app? Um, honestly, anything that you might have um, to share, I would really like to hear it. If you've had anything um, that you've been through support with lately, that maybe you'd like us to fix up um, in the app or any anything you've struggled with, that would be great to hear about. So please do drop any comments in the chat and we'll go through them. Um, and also any feature suggestions that you might have. So I do have a section here on my page, which I will just remove my videos from, uh, the feature suggestions list. So I am going to add um, one on there myself um, if I can just get the font size a bit bigger just to start things off so that people know what we're looking for you know it can literally be anything so for example um, I showed you the form widget element earlier so that's like a built-in element it means you have less building in the editor to do so it's a lot easier for you to get that element on your page quickly and set up a form so I might also want a table element so that would allow me to have tables in the app um, in the editor that I can then add text or images into without having to build it out myself with panels. So if that's something that um, you're interested in, you know, we might we might look to do that. So these are the kinds of things that we're looking for um, when we're talking about feature suggestions, etc. So 
Irene's asking why the occasional constant white lines on the funnel page. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, actually, Irene. Do you mean this page here or a page in the app? If you could let me know and clarify, that would be perfect. Then we can have a look at it. Jason's asking, can we copy an element, so for example, image text, to another page directly in our funnel? Yes, you can. So I will show you that now um, while some other people are posting their comments as well. And we'll look at that in action. So I will create a new page in this funnel. Just create a page from scratch. So if you want to clone an element to another page, all you need to do is go into the page in question where the element is, select the element that you would like to clone. And then once it's selected, you can see I've got this image. You've got a clone option, which if I click that will clone it on the page, but you also have this little drop down arrow and that will allow you to clone it to either another layer on the same page or to another page. So I can actually clone it across um, funnels as well if I want to. For example, I can choose any one of the funnels in my account, uh, but I will clone it to this funnel and then I choose my target page, which is example. And then I have three choices for position. So original, which will put it where it is on this page at the top, which will snap it pretty much to the top and at the bottom, which will put it somewhere near the bottom. Obviously we have a blank page, so it won't really put it at the bottom. It will just be um, in the middle somewhere. So we'll go with original, we'll hit clone, that will clone it. And if we now come out of this page, we don't need to save it or anything like that. And then go into our example page. You'll see up here, it's importing one cloned element. And now this is cloned to our page. So that is an easy way to clone things across pages. Oh, the landing page. So this landing page here, the white lines, Irene. So these are just panels that I've basically put on the page to make it a bit more um, visible, like for the blue to stand out a bit more, just the design of the page, really. Um, there's nothing special about it. It's just some a couple of panels. So to break it up, this is acts like a header. We have this panel and then we have this one here. Yeah, Chandra, so any of those specific third party issues um, do get looked at by developers, but we can never promise that a third party widget will work perfectly with Convertry. Um, if it works well on desktop, but not on mobile, I'd possibly suggest turning it off for mobile and either finding an alternative that does work well for mobile or just not having it available um, would be a good compromise there, I think. So Steph's asking about the guidelines. So for those of you who don't know, these blue lines here are the guidelines. Um, what she's asking is, is there a trick to have them show up every time? So I just want to clarify, Steph, with this. Do you mean on the actual live page? Because if so, the guidelines don't actually show up on the live page. They're only meant for the editor. If you're having a problem with them in the editor, um, they shouldn't be not showing up sometimes. Um, because unless you've got them set to like zero or like 10,000, for example, which will get rid of them, they should just always show up. So you can set them to whatever you want. Like if you set, set it to 1280, that will increase the width. Um, but if you aren't seeing them all the time, it might be something on your page isn't working nicely with them. Um, so I'd recommend dropping support an email and seeing if we can have a look into that. Um, because it might be a bug. But yeah, I'm not sure what would cause that unless it was either a massive number that's moving them right the way to the edge um, or it's just like getting blocked by elements maybe. Yeah, I'm not really sure. So definitely contact support about that. Yeah, so um, Sadiqa, that is a good point. The, connection, the collections function is a great idea, but you feel it's a bit limited and uninspiring. It'd be great to have more variety. So that is a really good idea, I think, um, and something we should really be making more use of. So I'll add that to our uh, feedback list and essentially make sure we can try and get some... What size have I got these? Let's remove the size down a bit. Yeah, so increasing the number of um, built-in collections that we have. 
more collections. I think that's a great idea. And it also helps with building pages quicker, right? Because if you have a collection um, that is usable as like a massive section on the page, you can just add that right in. In fact, I'll show you what I mean now. So people that aren't familiar with collections um, can see what I mean. So collections is a pre-built set of elements that we offer for people to use. So we've got different options, headers, footers, columns, forms, hero sections, etc. Pricing tables is a good example because I think it's one of our best. So we have four options. And what this allows you to do is add a pre-built pricing table um, section to your page. So if we take this one and add it, I can add this section to my page, move it around as if I've built it myself. And all I need to do is edit the text and edit maybe like the pricing that I'm offering so that it's bespoke to my product um, or my service. And then you've basically done that in five minutes where it could have taken you a lot longer to build it out yourself. So that is what collections are. And I think that's a great shout, um, Sadiqa, to add them, uh, have more of those as well. Um, so I'm just um, scrolling back through the chat to make sure I get to where I was. Sorry, there's quite a lot of suggestions. I want to get um, through them all. So yeah, Chandra is saying the tables feature is much needed, too much time wasted creating panels, adjustment for mobile. Yeah, adjustment for mobile is definitely a fair um, shout. And I'll add that to the reasoning for the tables element. Um, adjustment for mobile can be time consuming. So I think a tables element would be a good addition as well. Uh, Sadiq is asking as well, is there a way to position images in the text element so you can have a wraparound, a line left and right, etc. So without actually manually doing it, we don't have an option on image um, to like align it up with a text element like maybe you can in Word, just what I'm thinking as an example. Um, you'd have to position them yourself. For example, if you add an image or we have one on the page already, like I've aligned this to the right um, of my text element. But there isn't really a way for me to um, wrap it around text, like have the text go either side. I'd have to do that manually. Um, hopefully the editor 2.0 stuff where you can have separate columns and rows will allow for a bit more alignment with that stuff. Um, I think that will be a good way to tackle it. Yeah, so Kofi saying, it's been a client for years. I think adding a built-in autoresponder and webmail would make Convertry second to none. So I will add this one, Kofi. Um, this is something that has been spoken about um, a lot, but I think it's just a lot of work um, for the return on it. Um, sorry, if I can actually type the idea, built-in autoresponder slash mail service. Because we have already so many autoresponders out there that are great at what they do and, you know, we don't want to try and cover everything in the kind of marketing space, you know, we're very much focused on being the best page builder is why our efforts have been skewed towards that rather than adding something like an autoresponder. Um, but the fact that it's being raised, I think, is shows that people would like it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I will add that to the list as I've done so and pass that feedback on. Yeah, so Sadiqa is saying um, if you have a section which you make invisible for a period of time, so I imagine if you're having something that maybe appears after a set amount of time, be good that the page gap closed rather than leaving an empty space. So yeah, that isn't something you can do at the moment. Um, and I'm not sure if it's possible with the way the editor is built. Um, like we don't have the ability to, for example, have an accordion which opens and pushes the page down because of the way the page um, elements are actually added to the page when it's live. Um, that's one of the reasons we haven't done anything like that. So that kind of, um, I guess, interactiveness on the page. I'll add it as that. Um, and then I will use your example. So I will add it to the list. Um, but it isn't something that I think would be able to be done out of the box on Convertry without any kind of third party software. But you know, and I, I do want to make sure that I'm not giving you guys like 
false promises, which is why I, I want to be open with what we uh, reasonably think is possible and not for the editor. Yeah, so a question about the guidelines, going back to those, um, increasing the guidelines, um, what are the pros and cons of it? So essentially the guidelines really are just a guide for you in the editor. So um, they don't make a difference to their prospect when they see the page. What it does though, is it tells you at the point where um, a monitor would likely cut off of that size. So for example, um, if we go to guidelines, they're set to 1280 at the moment. This is 1280 pixels, like this space in between here. So this in theory would be the edge of a 1280 um, pixel monitor. So that is what they're used for really. So they're a good guide for where to keep um, elements on the page so that you know they're gonna be visible. Um, so if you had like, you knew someone was viewing on 1280 and you had an element all the way out here, the chances are they wouldn't see all of it. So it's just really for help with building pages and ensuring you know what is going to be seen. Um, yeah, so pasting text is something that I believe we have actually added now. So if I uh, right click. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so there we go. I had to allow it for some reason on Chrome. Uh, but we do actually have that. So I can now copy and I can use control V to paste because it's on my clipboard or I can right click and click paste and that will paste it in um, as so. So yeah, I think that's a good um, a good addition. And I know that's something people have been asking for as well. So I'm glad that we've got that in there. Yeah, are there plans to add new funnel templates? We do have a load of funnel templates, um, page templates, et cetera, already. Um, I'd be interested actually to see what template themes or um, niches people would be interested in for templates. So for example, we have one that's for like a photographer. We have some that are for um, webinars. We have some that are geared toward maybe um, selling food products. Any different themes like that that people would be interested in for templates, I would be very interested to hear. Uh, can icons be used to create bullet points? Yet yeah, they can. You would have to do that manually. Um, so you can actually edit the marker symbol. Um, we have a few here. But if you wanted to use an icon, you could go to more elements, icons, and then select one. So if you wanted this little um, rotating arrow, you could do that, but you would have to line it up yourself, for example, like there, instead of the bullet. So you can see um, what I mean by that, hopefully. Yeah, so Steph, in terms of um, autoresponder integrations, we do actually have a ton already. Um, active campaign that you mentioned there is one um, that we have an integration with. So. Um, any that you think are good additions. So I see you see like Brevo, which is formerly Send in Blue, which I'll add. Um, but, but we do have an integration with Zapier, you're right. Um, but we do also have um, integrations with um, a number of autoresponders. In fact, I can show you in the forms area. If we go to autoresponders, um, you can see these are all the autoresponder services that we cur currently have an API integration with. So essentially, if you have an account with one of these services or you want one, you can connect it to your Convertry account and have the information passed into your lists in that service. Yeah, so in terms of quizzes, um, we don't actually have a quiz element in the app. We do have uh, the option to add a Quizitry quiz in there, which Quizitry is another software that was developed by us. Um, if you're not aware of that, please feel free to email support for the details. Um, but you can make quizzes on there. 
Um, and essentially in what you've said, where you have multiple choices to collect information from clients to give them targeted info, you can do all of that with Quizitry um, and you can easily add a Quizitry quiz to your page. So you just use the Quizitry element um, and then what you would do is in element properties, you would add the link. So there's an example one here, which I'm not sure if it's um, been set up. I will have a look. But yeah, so you can see here, this is an example one. Um, and you can have these on your Convertry pages. They're really um, easy to add, easy to create. So if you're interested in quizzes, I would um, definitely recommend checking out Quizitry. Yeah, so please email support for the, more details about that. Okay, Sadiqa, so yeah, if the existing text would be pasted uh, using the same font and format. Okay, yeah, that's that's understandable. I can add that to the feature list as well. Um, pasted text keeps styles when copied to the clipboard. I think that sums it up nicely. Um, and you mentioned about icons as well being if you wanted to add your own marker symbol. Yeah, so. Um, selecting custom bullet marker. I think you can actually do that marker type. Yeah, so you can do it with image. Um, so you could do it with an image. So if you had an icon that you uploaded as an image, for example, this one, you could do that. So you can see it's added there. Obviously, you would have to find quite a good, um, let's see if we can find one, uh, bullet icons on Pixabay. Uh, all right, so let's say you wanted to have this bowling, bowling pin one. That probably would work quite nicely as a, as a bullet. Let's see what it looks like. So it is going to be it's going to be different for each image, obviously. Um, so that one, I mean, that looks like it's pretty terribly done. Yeah, so it's what I mean. You will have to find the right image to use as an icon, but you can do it with the image type. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll put um, selecting icons um, as a bullet marker type as the feature request. And that way we could potentially use the icon set that we have um, as bullet points. I think that would be a good way to tackle that. Uh, Sendio never responds to my support questions. I'm not sure, Jason, if, if uh, they have anyone over there still. Honestly, I've never actually had any um, experience working with them myself. Is Quizitry being updated? Seems to be the same since first introduced. We have introduced a number of new features to Quizitry um, since it was launched. It's had a reskin as well, but it, it isn't something we work on like we do with Convertry. Um, it is kind of built now and ready to use. But if you have any feedback for Quizitry as well, you can email the Quizitry support desk, which is support at quizitry.com, um, and they'll be able to help you out there as well with that. OK, so we've got some good feature requests um, and I've been through some questions as well. Um, and we're into the last kind of 20 minutes. Um, so is there anything specifically that people have struggled with or would would like, you know, extra training on, for example? Um, we have a number of different trading guides in the app. Uh, one for affiliate marketing, for opt-in um, marketing as well, so lead generation, that kind of thing. Is there anything else people would be interested to learn more about that might help them with just their business in general um, or using Convertry? You know, we have our crash course. Are there any parts of that that people think um, we could improve as well? Um, and is there any part of, you know, the setup of setting up funnels um, pages that people find complicated? I'd be interested to hear about that as well. So for Steph said best practices for setting up a page. Okay. That is a good idea. I think we 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 definitely will have some stuff in the knowledge base about that. Um, and I know for a fact we have stuff um, about how to create a page in desktop that will mobilize well. Um, and I can actually drop the link in the chat because it's one that I did a while ago. But I will add that as well. Um, 
I'll add that to this list, but under a different section. So if we do training, love to learn more about tying to autoresponders, says Scott. So linking to autoresponders. And I guess, Scott, um, as well as like linking to autoresponders, maybe it'd be helpful. Um, to see what autoresponders can do and how you can get the best out of them with Convertry. And I think that would be useful just building on that because we have got a number of um, help guides in the knowledge base. So let me just go to help.convertry.com. So for anyone that doesn't know, this is our knowledge base. So I'll put this in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. Best practices for asset management as well. Okay, uh, let's add that as well. So I'll just get back to the knowledge base now. So this is basically your one-stop shop for anything related to that app that you might want to know. For example, if we go autoresponder, we do have stuff in here that might be um, useful. If you want to connect to a specific one, like active campaign, you can see full active campaign walkthrough. That will take you through setting up lists in active campaign as well. So we do definitely have training on that. Uh, maybe we could make that more discoverable. Um, is that possibly an issue? Um, how many of you actually were aware about um, help.convert.com? Very much aware, says Steph. Used it a lot, says Cynthia. Okay, that's good. It's good to know that it's um, something that people are aware of. But yeah, this is a great resource. Um, we do update it every week near enough with new help guides. So if you haven't used it, um, please do make sure you're checking help.convert.com as well, because we do have a lot of um, these kind of help videos in there about different um, things you might want to do with Convertry, for example, like setting up specific autoresponders, um, and they will go through the steps very thoroughly. Okay, so we seem to be coming to the end of the suggestions and the threads. I really appreciate everyone jumping on today. Um, it's been very helpful. As always, if anyone has any extra suggestions or problems that they face, please do email us, support at convertry.com. I'm putting it in the chat right now. That is our email. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions or queries or need any help, please do email us there. One of our team will be happy to help you. Um, and last comment I see in here about templates did anyone have any specific templates they would like? So Sadiq has brought that up again. Some are very dated, um, which is fair. You know, some of them will have been added when we very first started. Um, so that's a fair, a fair assessment. I would love to add a couple of template suggestions to my list. If anyone could give me um, some, that would be great before we head off. And um, Steph, for affiliate training, we do actually have a... Um, affiliate marketing course in the training area um, so have a look at that um, and we also have a guide in the resources section on how to promote convertry as an affiliate so I'll just go and grab those links for you um, and drop them in the chat before we um, before we wrap up so there's the affiliate marketing one and the resources page which we are actually merging into one soon. So there won't be this confusing thing where you have one set of guides in one place and one in another. We're going to merge them soon. Um, and there's your resources. Um, events listing template. Events listing. Okay. Are you talking about events for promoting like software or um, 
like meetup events. I'm just trying to think specifics is why I ask. I think we do have some events um, template in here. We type in events. Yeah, so like we have these events, got an event. Um, are these maybe not doing it for you? Um, concerts, gigs. Okay, cool. So concert slash gigs template uh, in brackets events. Any more template suggestions before we wrap up? Okay, courses and boot camps. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Courses, boot camps. Plumbers, uh, bathroom renovations. We do have one for um, construction. So we have that one there and we do have another one for construction, um, but I can't remember what it's called. So let me just have a look. And it is one of my favorite template sets actually in the app. Uh, home repair. So we have a home repair one, which you can definitely tailor to a plumber. Um, I think that's quite a nice one. So yeah, check that out. Sometimes it will just take scrolling through them to find the one you want because we have so many. Um, local professional services is a good one. David, we'll add that as well. Marketing funnels for courses, boot camps. Okay, cool. We've got a good amount there, I think. Okay, so we are coming to the end of the webinar now, everyone. So thank you all for joining. Um, I really appreciate all the feedback. Um, and everyone at Convertory appreciates it because this is how we improve the app. So thank you all. We've got a good list here. Um, just add my templates heading. So yeah, like I say, if you do have any questions, um, queries or suggestions, please don't hesitate to contact us, support at Convertory.com. We have someone on the desk um, pretty much all the time and because we have people in different time zones, which is great. So no matter where you are in the world, you'll be able to get a response fairly quickly. Um, I think our first response times are sitting at around 30 minutes, which is exceptional. So we have great support. Um, and yeah, I just want to say another big thank you for um, attending today. And the webinar replay will be going up in the knowledge base soon. If you do want to have a look at those new features again at the start, we'll be able to uh, recap those. So thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. Have a great weekend and hopefully see you all again soon on the next webinar. Bye.